good good afternoon uh, once again dear members so we are uh, after this uh, cad celebrations uh, we are meeting online and uh, speaking about the cad celebrations uh, almost uh, the managing committee uh, is extremely thankful to the entire uh, members of trishul branch for coming over to the branch and uh, with your family in fact uh, the number was uh, 353 in fact what i said in the whatsapp but uh, uh, looking into the same we got at around 380 or something so it was uh, a huge uh, response from you members uh, for making the ca day celebrations and uh, bringing the unity of chartered accountants uh, showcasing the uh, chartered accountants the unity so that's an uh, uh, extreme thankful that managing committee is extremely thankful for your uh, support so now uh, coming on moving on as part of this uh, Uh, revision procedures of uh, various accounting standards we have a vcm today on uh, accounting standard 16 which is the uh, borrowing cost and uh, in fact on 25th may we had an uh, uh, vcm on uh, accounting standards uh, as 10 and uh, definitely more will continue now uh, to handle the same we have an uh, very active uh, in fact uh, a women uh, clubs member uh, c ashwati vinayak and uh, she is from dubai and i was just uh, mentioning before the uh, the women's club is bringing in international speakers that is what i uh, uh, should understand because the uh, earlier uh, speaker uh, they had i think it was from outside india itself so i on behalf of trishul branch do welcome uh, c ashwati nayar to this uh, vcm Thank and uh, i must uh, thank you and i must also welcome uh, the very enigmatic uh, and very dynamic uh, president of the women's club uh, ca soumya jayganesh uh, uh, definitely you should bring in more <laughs> and uh, i also welcome other members of trishur brand to this cm and uh, i do over see my secretary over there satish uh, very charming fellow uh, so i do welcome uh, him also so before uh, handing on the baton or uh, uh, i do just invite uh, i would just need to tell two three areas that to the members that is uh, first of all we have this uh, tereng festival in uh, of sikasa on this uh, 16th and 17th and uh, today morning uh, satish sir had uh, unveiled the brochure of course our uh, uh, very dynamic uh, sikasa chairman will be uh, inviting uh, you all and we will be inviting you all and on 16th and 17th and in fact uh, today morning we were just uh, looking into the registrations uh, and i was quite surprised that the registration is uh, touching 1000 numbers and it's quite a record and uh, definitely and the n number of entries that uh, will bring in uh, that has been uh, bought in as the for of the various competitions definitely the uh, that uh, showcasing talent of the students of the ca uh, definitely trishur branch uh, will be one of the trishul branch will be showcasing the immense talent that uh, students of uh, ca profession uh, in this uh, 16th and 17th so i do uh, use this occasion to invite all the members to drop in at the branch do uh, visit all the stages almost two stages will be there i think so and we see all the stages and give support to the sikha sub uh, activities and uh, one more thing on 18th uh, trishur we have uh, that agm annual general body of the trishur branch and it's the 41st annual general body meeting and it's uh, being going to be conducted physically at the branch premises at uh, 5:30 pm so please do make a note of the same we had already circulated the accounts and uh, other details through email and uh, please do make sure that you do attend uh, Uh, the agm and uh, give your suggestions for the betterment of the institute and uh, for uh, the managing committee to uh, for a way forward and uh, before inviting cs omej jayganesh uh, to introduce the speaker uh, i must uh, tell that uh, this is uh, one of the first time uh, this is the first talk that uh, cs shwadi is going to make and uh, definitely i wish her all the best and uh, trishur branch of course it's uh, it is i always go by the saying that trishur branch is a treasure trove of uh, speakers and uh, definitely ashwati will uh, become an uh, renowned speaker that uh, trishur has uh, produced so that's all from uh, from the chair and uh, definitely inviting ms soumya uh, to introduce our uh, speaker
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon to one and all. Today, I'm here to introduce CA Ashwadi V. Nair. Ms. Ashwadi is a chartered accountant by qualification with four years of experience in the field of costing, finance, accountancy, and audit. She's currently working with a large multinational airline group called Air Arabia in Dubai, leading their costing division. She has also worked as a financial analyst in Chennai for a British MNC called Royal Dutch Shell. She has significant experience in auditing entities of SMEs and large business groups with diversified businesses and consolidation of their financial statements. Ashwadi also holds diploma in IFRS from ACCA and is a Bachelor of Commerce from India. She has extensive representation in external workshops. She is also a voracious reader by nature and her hobbies include gardening and traveling. I'm very, very happy to introduce CA Ashwadi V. Nair. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sami ma'am. Thank you so much, Adit sir, also for your warm welcome. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining today's session. Hope you're all doing well. So before me moving to today's topic, I would like to take a few minutes uh, to really, really appreciate the effort that Trishu chapter as well as the Women's Club is taking in order to initiate such a movement in which even female, young female chartered accountants like me is getting an opportunity across the globe. Um, it's very appreciable. And I'm not quite surprised because I know the continuous effort that the Trishu chapter is putting forward for the members as well as students. Uh, I have personally experienced this because I am a proud Trishu chapter product. Uh, kudos to the entire team and keep going, keep this boost always. Uh, so with that, uh, let's move to today's session, AS16, Borrowing Course. I'll be sharing my screen. Uh, let me know if you're finding difficulty to see. I hope you're able to see the screen. No, it's not visible. It's not? Yeah, now see. Okay. I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry. sorry, you're able to see the screen, right? Right. Yeah. So, AS 16 borrowing cost. This standard is actually a very simple standard but very much relevant for every kind of business because it's applicable to all business irrespective of the sector or industries. Let's see the agenda for today's topic. We'll start with discussing of the scopes, then we'll go and see the definitions, uh, then we'll see the principles how to capitalize the borrowing cost, then we can see the recognition of borrowing cost, then the terms like uh, what is a qualifying asset and how to understand what is a substantial period of time. After that, we can see the three points like when to start capitalization, when the capitalization will be suspended, and finally, when we'll be stopping the capitalization. We'll also touch upon uh, how the exchange difference and uh, borrowing cost has been uh, considered. Then uh, we'll see a few scenarios where we commonly use or where commonly the borrowing cost incurred and also few areas where we'll confuse whether it's a borrowing cost or not. And finally, we'll see how it has been disclosed in the financial statement. So the scope, AS 16 actually applies on the cost incidental to any borrowings made. And the cost here should be actual. It is not based on any notional cost. So AS 16, the scope actually is applied on accounting for the borrowing costs. So let's see the definition. The two points given here are critical in order to understand what are borrowing costs and whether it is a borrowing cost. The first point states that borrowing costs are interest and other costs incurred by an enterprise in connection with the borrowing of a fund. Here, interest, we all know, like whenever we are borrowing any amount from a bank or something, we'll be paying an interest back. But what are the other costs? For example, 
if you are taking a loan from a bank there can be some processing charges or stamp duty uh, sometimes even we will purchase the loan more than the par value so there will be a premium or less than the par value there could be discount all these things which are directly attributable or are related to the borrowing of a funds can be considered under other cost and not only interest these other cost also forms part of the borrowing cost the second point is like should be a qualifying asset which takes a substantial period of time for its intended use or sale here actually there are three terms which is very critical first it is qualifying asset second substantial period of time third intended use or sale uh, we are uh, we'll see in our future slides i mean coming slides like what are qualifying assets substantial period of time and everything in depth but these two points we should uh, understand or this is how a uh, borrowing cost is being defined and the other points the coming are few of the borrowing cost like including interest and commitment charges on bank borrowings and other short term and long term borrowings amortization of discounts or premium related to borrowings amortization of ancillary cost incurred in connection with arrangement of borrowings these three points i have already covered as an example in the previous slide point 1 so that's uh, the other cost when i told you that's also covered under this points apart from that it also includes any financial charges in respect of asset acquired under finance lease or under similar arrangements uh, borrowing was also include any exchange difference on the borrowing cost uh, where we have taken a loan from a financial institution a foreign loan then borrowing cost not only applicable on a long term borrowings even for a short term borrowings it is qualified for borrowing cost the next few points are excluded from borrowing cost that is an actual or imputed cost an example is uh, a company decided that they will give loan from based on their share capital on a notional interest uh, of 10 percentage here it's a notional cost of the 10 percentage interest is just a notional cost it's not an actual cost we have already discussed in the uh, earlier uh, slides that the cost should be actual cost so those that should be excluded it cannot it, it is not qualified as a borrowing cost also if there is any sales tax deferrals and all it is also not considered as a borrowing cost now let's see the principles of capitalization of the borrowing cost the borrowing cost incurred on construction or acquisition acquiring a qualified asset which takes a substantial period of time for construction it is capitalized as cost of the asset so here what you mean is the qualify that qualifying asset there should be a substantial period for construction or acquisition or purchase this uh, the period uh, the substantial period for its intended use or sale till that period any cost incurred which is a borrowing cost can be capitalized all other cost which is not having any substantial period taken for its intended use or sale will not capitalize it or it is not considered as a borrowing cost as per as 16 it will be charged directly to pnl and also one more thing if that qualifying asset is uh, ready for its intended use or sale any cost any borrowing cost incurred after that point will also be moved to pnl only the cost which is uh, arising during that period for a qualifying asset will only be forming part of as 60 now the recognition of borrowing cost uh, recognition the borrowing cost that are directly attributable to the acquisition construction or production of a qualifying asset should be capitalized as part of the cost of that asset the amount of borrowing cost eligible for capitalization should be determined in accordance with the statement other borrowing cost should be recognized as an expense in the period in which they incur this is same as what we have uh, already discussed in the principles that any expenditure other than that should be considered as expenditure 
Borrowing costs are capitalized as part of the cost of qualifying asset when it is probable that they will result in future economic benefit to the enterprise that the cost can be measured reliably. Other borrowing costs are recognized as an expense in the period in which they are incurred. Now let's see qualifying asset. We were telling qualifying asset from the previous many slides and let's see what is a qualifying asset. A qualifying asset is an asset which takes a substantial period of time to get ready for its intended use or sale. There should be a time period taken for this asset to get ready. Uh, we cannot use it or start uh, using the asset uh, immediately. An example is if you're purchasing a car, is it qualify? Is that a qualifying asset as per AS 16? No, because car is readily available. We go to showroom, we purchase a car, immediately we can use it. We don't need a substantial period of time to put it for an intended use. We can use it immediately whenever we purchase it. So it doesn't qualify for AS 16. However, in the case of a machinery, in the case of a machinery, we should see the scenario. If you're purchasing the machinery and if you can use the machinery directly, immediately for any use, it doesn't satisfy as a qualifying asset. But however, if you think that this machinery has to undergo many process, uh, we have to implement it, it would take some substantial period for its intended use, then this machinery now qualifies as a qualifying asset. In this definition, you can see there is two, the, there is a term called intended use or sale. We are mentioning intended use as well as sale. Intended use generally we is classified it's for the fixed assets, uh, the example as the machinery and everything. What is intended sale? It's for the current asset. So AS16 applicable for both the fixed as well as current asset. So the intended sale can be your inventories. Mm, a telecom business company would have acquired uh, a 4G licensing. The company has an option either to sell this 4G license to a third party. It directly sell it off, it's just their revenue, they'll book it. But this company decided that they'll keep this license and they will uh, create a new network out based on this uh, license. In that case, it will take a substantial period for the company to, uh, to uh, create that network, the new network. So any borrowing cost, which is related to the acquisition of this uh, 4G license qualifies as a uh, borrowing cost and we are eligible for capitalizing it as on AS-16. Mm, uh, this, this is one of the example for an inventory. Okay. Another one is, uh, the thing is, if an inventory has been stored in a warehouse or something, it won't qualify as an asset because the inventory is in warehouse. It doesn't mean the inventory requires a substantial period of, like, like it is not, it is already ready for its in the, uh, intended sale. Only thing we have been stored in a guard out, it doesn't qualifies for this uh, AS-16. Now let's see substantial period of time. From the first slide to the previous slide, we were hearing the term substantial period of time, substantial period of time. The funny part is there is no proper definition for substantial period of time. It, de it depends upon the facts and circumstances only. Generally, we consider 12 months as a substantial period of time. But however, based upon the facts and the circumstance or management decision, even a shorter period can be considered as a substantial period of time. Uh, so in uh, a qualifying asset definitely need to take a substantial period. Example of a construction. If you are constructing a building, it will take definitely a few months, more than 12 months definitely for a building to get constructed. So it is considered as a qualifying asset. But what about, uh, there is another uh, scenario where in which there's a contractor, a construction contractor. He received, he or he acquired a permit for construction. The permit is used for specific construction. So his business is just construction and sale. He is having this permit for a, a uh, to do a special construction. 
it will take him some few uh, months or substantial period for the qualifying or the intended uh, use or, or sale of that particular property. So what we what we can do is any borrowing cost which the contractor has taken in relation to acquiring that permit, it can be considered under AS 16 for the period till the uh, asset is ready for its use or sale. Uh, another example with inventory for substantial period is the liquor or the wine. As we know that liquor and time will take a period. Uh, period to get a maturity. Then after that mean matured only, we'll be uh, selling it up. You know how the more the higher the year we keep a wine, the more stronger or better it is. So the product itself is ready to its intended use after a time only. So for the inventories like this, we can actually cover it under AS 60. Now let's see, now till this time we understood what is the principles, how to recognize and we also learned about the what is qualifying asset, substantial period, so we have an understanding of how to recognize it. Now let's see when can we start the capitalization. There are three golden rules for starting capitalization and the thing is all these three points should be cumulatively satisfied, then only capitalization can be commenced. If one point doesn't satisfy, then we cannot start the capitalization. The first one is borrowing cost should be incurred. Definitely, there should be a borrowing cost. Then only we can pass it as 60. Second one is an expenditure should be incurred. We, I have taken a loan of 10 lakhs. I've started my construction, but I haven't used any of the loan amount. I haven't expensed any of thing. And in that scenario, I'm not supposed to capitalize without being using that borrowing cost, how can I capitalize it? And third point is activities has to necessarily been prepared. That means I have taken loan of 10 lakhs. I have from that three lakhs I have given to as given as an advance to a contractor for construction or anything. But I only have a plan to construct a building. I haven't started step one, it's like I don't have a uh, sketch or anything. I have an intention to uh, construct a building. That doesn't qualify. You should, the activities should really commence. Then only it, uh, then only we can commence the capitalization. So the three points is like, there should be a borrowing cost, expenditure needs to be incurred and also activity should be commenced. When can, when are we, it is being suspended. Yes, they can be suspended. So if an activity is, is being interrupted for an extended period, in that case, capitalization can be suspended. So the thing is like security maintenance, regulatory follow-up and complaints, etc., are the cases in which we might suspend the capitalization. But however, if the suspension is for a temporary delay and all, no, we won't do any uh, suspension. For example, capitalization continues during the extended period needed for inventory to do mature or the extended period during which high water levels delay construction of a bridge. In such high water level are common during the construction period in the geographical region involved. Now let's see when are we stopping or ceasing of the capitalization. So capitalization should cease when, uh, when this qualifying asset is ready for its intended use or sale. Once it is ready for its use or sale, after that any cost involved will be only expensed at all. We will not capitalize it. So in case of a physical assets like a construction of a building and all, if that building is constructed ready and all, and we are able to uh, use that building, we'll stop capitalization. Even if we have some other uh, small activities happening after that also, it might not uh, stop us from that. Uh, so for example, like uh, I have some renovation, uh, not renovation, like uh, furnitures need to be in, uh, included in the, uh, uh, construction building and or it, it doesn't stop it. So once it has been in then, uh, ready for its intended use, with our furniture also, I will be able to use the building. So it's ready for this intended use or the purpose. So we should stop the capitalization. Similarly, uh, there can be uh, qualifying assets which will be completed on part basis. 
uh, part basis in an example is a business park a business park will be consist of many many uh, or several buildings so if i finished construction of one building uh, and the building is ready for its intended use but the entire project is not over but the building one building alone is ready for the intended use the that buildings that portions capital cost after that i am i we cannot uh, capitalize we should stop the capitalization any borrowing cost incurred after the that particular and any borrowing cost related to that particular building alone should be expenses expense to the pnr so uh, even a whole or a part based upon based on if we are been able to use it like uh, its purpose of intended use or sale is completed we will stop capitalization now let's see the how exchange differences will be affected in a borrowing cost mm, some big companies might take loan from a foreign institutes a uh, foreign loan because their interest rate will be much lower than the uh, indian banks but however they will be exposed to this exchange differences and can be capital or can be consider this under borrowing cost so any expenditure relating to the borrowing cost during that period where uh, this uh, asset is not, not ready till the asset is ready to its intended use or sale that period whatever exchange difference incurred on borrowing cost will be eligible for considering under as 16 and we can capitalize it as part of the borrowing cost okay these are few scenarios uh, the proportionate interest on fund utilized including on advance made to suppliers for the qualifying asset should be capitalized the loan used for working capital should not be capitalized so working capital might not qualify the criteria as mentioned for as 16 so we will not be capitalizing it next one is the interest expenditure once capitalized correctly in accordance with as 16 cannot be decapitalized hereafter even if the interest amount is paid next similarly we have a problem like borrowing cost incurred during the normal period of a trial run should be capitalized so the case of like any machinery or a project so this machinery uh, we will be saying that it is ready for its intended use only if we have a successful trial run maybe after multiple trial run uh, so first or second trial run it will be an error multiple trial run has to be considered and if a successfully a trial run is done then only it is ready for its intended use so even any borrowing cost incurred during the period of the trial run on the normal period okay will be considered for capitalization investments are not qualifying asset under as 16 if you are uh, get uh, if you are purchasing a share from a loan amount and all no you we cannot capitalize that borrowing cost because loan that shares are readily available there is no substantial period required for a share to get ready we can take the shares or the value within the time when we are purchasing so that also will not qualify as an as 16 now the last but not the least that is the disclosures in financial statement so before me moving to the disclosure i will uh, tell you the briefly on how to calculate the borrowing cost so there generally there are two methods one is specific borrowing and other is generic borrowing in the case of specific borrowing a loan will be taken exclusively for that particular qualifying asset it is straight away whatever borrowing cost we have incurred we can use so in case of a specific borrowing the amount that should be capitalized is the actual borrowing cost minus any temporary income what is temporary income as sometimes we will have excess amount in our loan which we don't have to use for this construction or purchase or acquisition so we might use this excess amount we might put it in some ft or some investment and we are earning some income like uh, some interest or some income out of this so whenever you are capitalizing you should minus you should subtract this income from the actual borrowing cost and that amount only you can you are eligible to capitalize under specific uh, 
loan. And in the case of generic loan, like uh, you, it is not an exclusively for that qualifying asset. The loan is taken and based on amount, we'll be using it for one or more than one qualifying asset. In that case, we'll calculate it based on weighted average cost method. So we have the figures now ready. So after identifying all the points and calculating also the borrowing cost, we have to disclose the same in financial statement. And when you disclose, you first have to mention the accounting policy adopted for borrowing cost and followed by the amount of borrowing cost capitalized during the period. So that whatever we have calculated as per either as per specific or generic method. Thank you all. Thank you so much for your time and patience. Hey members, if you have any query, you can post in the chat box or directly raise your hand so I can unmute you and ask you a question. Okay, there are no questions as of now. Maybe everybody understood everything. <laughs> Maybe, Maybe they don't understand anything. <laughs> <laughs> Not like uh, Sami, madam, you have anything to close? Uh, no, it was actually a very, very, very detailed and a very informative presentation by Ashwadi. So uh, I think everyone has understood and uh, she did it very well. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, then the chairman is traveling, so he, he could not join us for the fixing. So you're winding up. Uh, yeah, as a part of the branch initiative, that uh, to bring more uh, new. Uh, faculties to the uh, programs, especially young members. So we started uh, with uh, uh, associating with the men's club. So they um, producing that new members, especially from abroad. That is a good thing. So I um, today we had a presentation by C. Ashodi and a very informative one. I on behalf of Trishur Branch, thanks C. Ashodi for the valuable time spent with us. Thank you. I also thank Soumya for the warm introduction of the faculty and all the members who joined us for the meeting. I expect uh, more participation from the younger members uh, for the presentation of this, this kind of small webinars. Thank you. <laughs>